Hello inmates, it's been a stressful couple of weeks not being able to ride our bikes, complete lockdown. It's not great, is it? But I wanted to do a video, a long awaited video that I've been wanting to do for a while. And I wanted to talk about my, my luggage system. A while ago, I sold my black aluminium pannier set and the top box as well. Now I did this because I, I'm on my third GS now. So I, I bought my first GS Adventure in 2014. I traded it in for another one in 2016. And then I got the GS Adventure Rally, uh, this one here in 2018. I did take the, the luggage set with the deal when I bought it from Motorrad, but I've never really, not really ever, I, I never really used that luggage set. Main reason being, I'm not trying to brag or anything, it's just that I tended to start ruining the panniers when going on road trips, especially when you got to really good mountain roads and you're really on it and you're cornering well and you find you're scraping your panniers going around the, cor the corners. So I didn't want to ruin this lovely new set of black panniers. So the road trip I did in Romania, where I put a link up here to that, that road trip I did last year, uh, I didn't even put panniers on. We just took, I think it's like a 20 litre roll bag. I can't, don't, don't put them on the sides. I think it's a great big 20 litre, well, a great big roll bag, the biggest I could get my hands on. I literally, I literally just strapped it to the back seat and we were just tried to travel as light as possible and we, we did everything with a roll bag. Whereas this year, hoping I get away, I've already canceled one road trip because of the lockdown and we've got another one which we've pushed back to July and we've We've already had the bike shuttle cancel on us, which is really unfortunate because the bike shuttle is a fantastic service. If you've never heard of the bike shuttle, I'll put a link down below because Clive at the bike shuttle, uh, not Clive, Guy, Guy Buswell at the bike shuttle, a real nice bloke and uh, can't be more helpful when it comes to organizing. Well, he doesn't actually organize the road trip, but he takes all of the hard work out of getting down there uh, without putting miles on your tires and, miles on your engine so you can start your first mile in Switzerland in the south of France or Toulouse is the other place as well, down obviously in the south of France near the Pyrenees. So we've pushed that one back, we've been now booked a ferry in July to go down to Spain to do some Pyrenees and then ride back up through France. Whether that happens or not, I don't know, it's all up in the air. So uh, cancels a lot of not just road trips but holidays with the wife as well. So it's a shame, I'm supposed to be going to Denver in May with my wife for a bit of a USA road trip, possibly a bit of a biking, well it's not going to happen now so there's no point talking about it. <laughs> anyway, so I just want to show you what I'm doing right now because if you look at my bike, well, what I'll do, I'll turn it around and um, so I can show you the back because I've actually taken everything off my bike. I've taken all the, um, the pannier holders, the lot. So let me spin it around. Right, so as you can see, I've actually taken all the pannier frame off the bike. And the reason I've done that is because I love the clean look. I just love the clean look of the, of the bike without all the, the pannier frame on the back. It just shows the exhaust. Look, I know if I drop the bike, it's gonna do some horrendous damage to the rear exhaust, but the whole idea is that we're not gonna drop the bike, isn't it? And if I come around the other side so you can see, and you can see I've taken the whole frame off the back. Now, a lot of people might not know this, but a lot of people will know what I'm about to say, is when you buy a GS Adventure, you automatically get the, what I call the Zimmer frame on the back. A lot of you call, guys call that as well, the, the Zimmer frame that goes on the back, which holds the panniers. And when you take the panniers off, obviously it looks more like a Zimmer frame because the panniers aren't hiding the frame. I don't mind it. I like the look of the bike with the frame on this. I haven't got an issue with it. It's just that I really like it. If I'm not carrying luggage, I don't want the framework on the back of it. So, and I ride my bike more throughout the year without luggage than I do with luggage. So I like to run it like this, but I also have a bit of a love affair for the standard GS non-adventure. And I probably, when I do trade up to the R1250, because it's, it's inevitable, it's gonna happen, when eventually I fall out of love with, with, I won't fall out of love you soon, don't worry. I still love you, I still love you. I'll always love you, I'll always love her. <laughs> I can't talk about her like this, why she's in here. I need to block her ears. Where are her ears? For the air intakes or something. So <laughs> but if, I won't, I promise I won't, but if I trade up, if, if I trade up to an R1250, don't worry, I won't. But, but let's say for instance, I do. Well then, I'm 
probably going to go for the standard GS, the, the non-adventure. Reason being is the fuel economy, I, I know you're going to get more fuel inside the, the adventure tank, and that's kind of it really. There's nothing more to it. Now I strip these bikes down, adventure bikes and non-adventure GSs, every day of the week. Haven't been for the last couple of weeks, <laughs> for obvious reasons, lockdown and all that. Um, but uh, they are identical bikes identical apart from that fuel tank and I really don't think I'm going to miss that large fuel tank because when you end up going on a road trip you might be someone on the, on the road trip with you with a smaller tank so you're stopping anyway and I like the feel of the smaller tank between my legs I just it, it feels like a different bike I, it just feels more agile so I think for me I'd rather go for the GS but then equip it with aftermarket crash bars, uh, probably like the, 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 the Puig or the um, Torotech or Wonderlic, uh, Alt, Alt Rider, I'm not a big fan of those, but um, you know, I've, I've seen all the aftermarket crash bars that you can put on the standard GS and it just, it's basically puts all the armor like you got on the adventure bike, but it's more slimline and I just feel like I can do more with it by not having that great big adventure tank on there. As you can see, my bike is starting to look more like a GS at the back than it is the front. Now, the reason I brought all that up is because you will have seen, or you may not have seen, standard GSs without you know, the non-adventure GSs out there with the adventure Zimmer frame on the back because you can buy it afterwards and put it on. You can retrofit it afterwards and put it on. Because I, I have seen, you can Google it on Google Images, uh, R1250s, R1200 GSs with the full aluminium adventure pa panniers on there. You're thinking, oh, something doesn't look right. It's because it's not on the adventure bike, it's on the standard GS. So it will fit. It's the same size engine, it's the same frame, everything's identical. So don't start thinking, oh, that, that's too much luggage for a smaller bike, because it's not a smaller bike, is it? It's the same size bike. So what I've done, I've taken my Zimmer frame off and I've gone for semi-hard, semi-rigid, be careful what I say here, or semi-soft, <laughs> doesn't matter which way you spin it, it still sounds a bit weird, but I've gone from the semi-soft Lone Rider bags. So let me show you. So I normally have them hanging from my roof in, in my workshop, I just literally hang it over the joist. So I've taken my Zimmer frame and I've literally fitted my bags on the Zimmer frame. So when I want to go on a road trip, all I've got to do is undo the six bolts that are on the bike already. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I'm away. So I'm going to show you how quickly and how easy it is to put these on. And if I want to, I can ride the bike with it on all the time. But if I'm not using luggage, I can just squish the sides down, which I've done. It's all compressed in. Now I've got blue and red straps on here. They come standard with black straps. Um, and I might put the black straps back on again because I probably will be using this on my next road trip. Let me show you how quick and easy it is to put this on the bike. Stay tuned. So I've already taken the back seat off. So that exposes the bolts clearly at the top. Uh, and you'll notice when it's in this state without the Zimmer frame on, it looks just like the standard GS. Uh, which has got little slots for the, do they call it the Vario luggage? So you could hang Vario luggage on here if you wanted to. What I'm going to do is undo these bolts. And th these bolts are already here, going through the Zimmer frame. And all I've done is put them back in the respective holes, so I don't lose them. Plus it holds down, it holds the back down as well. Let's grab the, the Zimmer frame with the bags attached. Now the other good thing to mention here, can you see how it's already fitted to the Zimmer frame? So that, um, that took a little bit of time. I actually fitted it to the Zimmer frame with the Zimmer frame on the bike. So you can do it either way. You can take it off the bike or I, I'd probably recommend you fit it with it on the bike so you get an idea of the height. Now what I like about these is you can adjust the height of the bag. So if you wanted to raise the, uh, the low point of the bag, the lowest point of the bag, to avoid scraping them if you like to get your bike low on, on corners, well then you can do that, you can bring up the height, whereas you can't do that with the uh, BMW Motorhead ones. OK. 
Okay, so that is uh, kind of sitting in place already. So I just want to get a couple of those screws in. So I'm just loosely putting them in, lining them all up. Right, so that, that's everything loosely put into place. So now I'm gonna go around and tighten all the six nuts up. Excuse my messy wiring. I don't leave customers' bikes like this. This is because I'm constantly t putting things out and taking things out and putting new things in. The ones on the side. Okay, so there we are. Put the seat back on. And there you have it. Okay, so the next thing to show you is, as you can see, you can ride, literally ride along like this. Try and ignore the red and blue straps. That's a personal choice. I actually don't like it. I'm gonna go back to black. To open this up, this is what you do. So with that bag open, this side, this is a 31 litre bag, so this is the smaller bag. In the kit comes this, so you, you'd keep this stored at home in your workshop. So you can see this is the 31 litre uh, insert for this particular bag. And you've got a Velcro on each side. So as you push it down, you've got a Velcro on the sides in here as well. And as you push this down, the Velcro then sticks to the Velcro inside the bag. So you pinch it together like this, and you go down, right down in the middle, push it all the way to the bottom. And the reason you pinch it in the middle is because you don't want the Velcro touching each side straight away. You need to get it pushed right to the bottom, go right down to the corners. And there we go. That is now rigid. See? I can't, I can't push the size in because of that panel is now in there. So just this bag itself is completely waterproof, unlike the panniers that you get with BMW, the aluminium panniers. The reason it's waterproof is because as long as you roll the top three times, one, two, three. That's it. Pull these straps across, do them up at the top. Now I have seen somewhere where they, they, they go around the back and they tuck in and do up at the back, but I can't see how that's done, but I have seen pictures of it, but I don't understand how, how it's done. You then do up these here, and there you go, there's your bag. The whole idea is this is soft luggage. That's one way of doing it, but also with the kit, you get another wa waterproof bag. So I'm telling you right now, that's waterproof as it is but you don't want to be taking those bags off. But then you get this also in the kit. It's not an extra, it comes as part of it. So there's your shoulder strap. That's the bag itself. You've got handles on the bag. You basically fill it up with all your, all your gear. And again, it's got the, the waterproof roll top to it. One, two, three. That's now waterproof. Clip up each side. Obviously, there's nothing in this bag at all apart from a shoulder strap and pure air. You've got top fasteners here as well. So you can, you've got a lot of stuff in here. You want to really pack it down. You can fasten the top up as well. So that's the 31 litre bag. It's written on there, so you, you won't get the wrong bag in the wrong bag. Open the top up, push your bag in. So now you've got a waterproof bag in a waterproof bag. Roll the top.
Okay, so that's the 31 litre bag. Now we're gonna do the larger side. Okay, I thought I'd get this one done at a different angle from above so you can get to see inside as I'm actually opening it all up and putting the uh, partition inside there to open the bag up. Unclip these sides here. Got two at the front, two at the back, and one underneath. Undo the top, two. That then pulls out, okay? When it's in that state, we're gonna reach our hands inside and pull the whole of the, the inside out. Cause I tucked it in when I stored it, I tucked the inside. I tucked this bit inside. So whilst that's like that, I'm now gonna get the partition. It's not really a partition. It's, uh, it, it's what makes it rigid. So here we go again. Pinch the top so we, we don't make contact with the Velcro until the very end. One side. Push it into the corners. And there we are, that's now in there. So we've now got it completely rigid. So you come along with your, your, fully, your fully loaded 38 litre bag, full of stuff over your shoulder, open it up, pop that in, you seal the top, you hold it together, you roll once, you roll twice, you roll three times. You then curl that underneath a little metal latch and then these two will then slide together. You go through the hole and back again. It then reveals a little hole just here for you to put your padlock through. Now, when you buy this on the Lone Rider, Lone Rider website, you can buy as an optional extra little locks with keys rather than having a numeric lock. And then all you do is pop this through the, the hole, you set your number, pop it through, lock it up, roll the wheel, you're done. And that's now locked and secure. And the lock on the other side, same again, locked. If you like this kind of luggage, soft, semi-soft, semi-rigid luggage, instead of the leaky BMW aluminium panniers, I say they're leaky from my own personal experience being in torrential rain. Whereas these, I have every confidence that these will not leak in any water because we're not just using one waterproof roll bag, we're using two waterproof roll bags each side. The actual, this is actually waterproof. This is, and the roll bag inside and same with the other side as well. So I'm much more confident using these more than the BMW aluminium cases. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's been used to you. If it helps you make a decision and to actually go down the semi-rigid route, please click on the link down below. That will take you through to my website. I don't actually stock these. Lone Rider insists on selling them directly to you. However, there will be a code that you can put in onto the website to enable a discount for you. And I get a small kickback from that as well, which is great. Uh, it's the same with the, with the headlights. The headlights that I do, they are the Lone Rider headlights. Same with them, I get a kickback. I do actually stock them here as well, but they are exclusively for people who are coming to this workshop and having a full installation, modifications done to their bike, and they wanna go away with the Lone Rider headlight grill on there. I don't sell those online, so, um, but, 
with with these i don't actually store store these they're, they're just too big and bulky to actually to actually have here in stock i did forget to mention actually remember this isn't just for the gs adventure remember i said at the beginning of the video if you've got a standard gs non-adventure you can still have this set up the only thing is you'd need to acquire the zimmer frame which will fit to your bike anyway now, Lone Rider actually do sell those frames. They're not BMW Originals, I don't think. Don't quote me on that. I'm pretty sure they're not BMW Originals, um, but they are still very strong steel that they use, just like you get on here. As you guys already know, I'm very BMW GS specific. So if you're a GS rider or a GS adventure rider, then um, this is perfect for you. But if you're just a GS and you, you want these and you haven't got the Zimmer frame, you can either get the Zimmer frame secondhand off eBay, somewhere like that, or from BMW Motorrad Direct, but work out the prices. What's cheaper, going to BMW directly or going to Lone Rider, because they can also sell you those bars, that Zimmer frame to go on the back of your bike to home the uh, Lone Rider soft gear. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, ride safe, everybody, when we eventually out this lockdown. All the best, and I'll see you in the next video.